Now, just like a lot of other pickups, these items showed up in the background. They weren't out in the open. They weren't seen as a valuable item or anything really worth anything by the person selling them. I actually showed up not looking for these specifically, but I was actually there to meet someone to buy a bunch of items, a big bulk lot of items, and these showed up there. It added immensely to my purchase and actually made the purchase worth so, so, so much more. They almost gave me this stuff. Hey, it's Don. Today I wanted to talk about some items that I run into quite frequently, but they're not items that people usually set out there or price accordingly at all. They're usually cheapo or items they won't even put out. Sometimes they're just discarded. I've seen them in the garbage before. Now, I've talked about light bulbs. I actually have a video and I'll have a link down below in the description box as well as the comments to a video on vintage light bulbs and the valuable items that you can find out in the wild. We've sold used light bulbs for a couple hundred bucks that we actually unscrewed from a, a lamp. So there's many valuables out there. Now these go into a different realm. These two are from a different pick. I showed them in another video. 90 to 50 bucks. This one's about 50 these days right now. This one runs up to the $90 range. They're NOS new light bulbs that I paid pennies like a dollar fifty cents or something for them wasn't much at all knew these were selling for 25 bucks back in the day on the clearance section these are lamps for projectors eight millimeter projectors now you know a lot of people don't want to mess with those but i'll show you some big secrets here in just a few minutes on what you can do and how you can make a much bigger profit from things like these these are already great profits so i'm going to make a hundred bucks profit about right off the bat off of these two. They're NOS. How are you going to know they work? Well, you, you may not know they work, but I have projectors in here that I can stick these into, and if they come out, I know they work. So that's, that's the basic gist on it. There's a few other ways to test it, but unless you're into these or you run into them often, uh, it wouldn't be worth going into testable options and things like that. But if they're sealed in the box, the bulb looks untouched, it, it's shiny, there's so the silver, if it belongs silver, there's no dark spots, no burn marks or anything else like that. It's still sealed in the box. Usually it's good. I can't think of a time in the past before I got projectors to test them where I had one bad. At least if it's sealed in the box with price tags, it doesn't look like it's been removed or anything else like that. Well, I went to pick up some slides. This is just a few of what we got. They were in carousels. Carousels. So I paid 50 bucks for about 3,000 slides and their amusement park trips here in my area. Geauga Lake, uh, Kings Island, early Cedar Point, prehistoric gardens is in there, um, or storybook gardens and prehistoric park I think is the other one. But there's a bunch of slides, almost 3,000 specifically on attractions. It's pennies a piece once again. One of the best slides in here could go for 30, 40, 50 bucks on its own. Amusement parks, attractions, and things that don't exist anymore are almost always worth some money to collectors, at least historians and nostalgia buffs. So I grabbed them. Now I take them out of the carousels and we throw the carousels in the garbage. They're too old, they can't be recycled. I save the cardboard boxes the carousels came in and those get recycled. I've made tons of money off these. We've sold single slides, as I said, for over $600. I had some from the Rock and Roll Winter Fest with uh, Richie Valens, Big Bopper and stuff, and some slides that turned up in a lot, and I got a ton of money for those, several thousand dollars for just six or seven slides. So I grabbed slides up. I've got, geez, probably 50 or 60,000 slides in inventory because they're so darn cheap. I'll lot them up, put similar, I call cars together, all trains together, they do extremely well. Well, the point being is I showed up to get those, I saw some 8mm film, which these are, and in fact, one of them turned out to be Disneyland, because they were park buffs, and I haven't been able to determine this one, I haven't put it on my scanner. I have a 8mm digital scanner that scans every single frame of this film 
and puts it together in a file where I can watch it just like a regular movie. So I use that quite often if I'm curious or I wanna sell them, I put them on the scanner, I'll take a couple excellent shots. It comes out extremely nice. As long as the, the film is clean, you're good to go. These were throw-ins. I didn't pay a dime for that. I didn't pay a dime for this, which is about 30 bucks. It's new NOS 12 exposure, um, Coda Color 2 film. It's C126. Even with the rip off here, it's sealed, it's complete. I don't care if it's old, this was made in 1975. And some of this can actually still work, believe it or not. Um, I'll show you something neat at the end and something else in a minute here, but I got all these bulbs right here. They were three bucks each, $3 a piece. And I scoured, they weren't all together. They were in some boxes and some other areas. This is from a, a I guess it would be more like a real estate related person who takes over houses. That's all I'm going to say on that one, but this one turned out excellent. Um, again, I paid three bucks a piece for those. Paid a dollar for this. Yeah, I'll show you what this is in a minute here at the end. But 50 bucks, 50 bucks. You can look all these up. They're, they're legit sales. These two are 35 a piece. They're Sylvania, so they're not as nice as some of the GE. Here's a GE. This one's worth 10. You know, you take them as they come. This one's worth 55. It's a different size. It's a blue dot bulb, so it's a little different version. Another $10 bulb. And even though this box is pretty rough, the bulb is just like mint. Somebody must have had it taped to something. It's still worth about 70 bucks. All told, I've got like five or $600 just in projector lamps. That's what they're called, projector lamps. So if you type in the numbering on the front, DLJ or whatever it happens to be, and then lamp, um, and then the brand, you'll get prices on eBay. Looking in Terapeak, use Terapeak. Now I'll show you a good plus you can do with some of this and how you can make a lot more money than just selling the bulb in just a minute here. But this is a very unique item. This is going to get me 75 bucks. This little tiny piece right in this here, and it's got a bunch of crumbly um, cushioning material on there. They had five bucks on it, they threw this in as well as the film. I, I guess they didn't technically throw it in because that would have been 24. I paid a dollar for it, I guess, at that point. Now this goes to a camera and a very specific type of camera. That is the lens cap. It's a vintage camera as well. Now I've got two of these in house and I've got parts and other lenses to these. I've sold one in the past too. These are extremely scarce and they're what most people would refer to as a spy camera. This is a Pentax and it's a Asahi, A-S-A-H-I. That's the version, the brand, and I don't know how well this is going to show. That's what the camera body shows. It's got, a, you can get handles for it, you can get attachments, you can get flashes. There's tons of different lenses for it. It came in a leather case. There's some smaller versions of it as well. And this is one of the lenses for one of those tiny micro cameras. It's not really as small as you think, but it's, it's pretty decently sized small. Now, it's got all the lens covers. The lens looks immaculate. Many times when I run into these, um, they're untouched because, you know, it was such an oddity or rarity, somebody might get it, that you can't just get the film, even back then, you had to order it. It wasn't something available. Even the camera shops may have not had it. Now, if you look up that A-S-A-H-I and Pentex camera, you're going to see it. I know I call out a lot of stuff and people don't tend to look it up, but you know, if, if I didn't know what this was instantly from four or five feet away, I would have probably just walked by and not thought a thing about it. You know, I'm telling you, there's, it's these little things like this, knowing enough. I, I, I mess with cameras, I buy lenses, I buy, um, the one thing I don't buy in cameras is meters, unless it's a very few specific brands. Most meters aren't worth very much money, but I do buy vintage cameras and I love vintage media related items. I've got multiple projectors here myself, but this is a, a plus, a dollar item here easily. My sale price on it would be about 75 bucks. So less fees, this is 50 bucks. This pays for all of my slides. And then not counting that I've got the Disneyland film from 1967, it appears to be by the writing on the inside. That might be 50 bucks, 30 bucks. The other one, who knows, I won't count that. And then I've got three or $400 in, in projector lamps. Now, I sometimes hang on to these bulbs because I run into the projectors. 
if you buy, and I'm gonna show you one, I've got one setting right here. Let me slide this aside here. If you're into vintage media, this is one that you may miss because it's in this weird looking case, but this is actually a projector. Elmo is the brand name. Uh, it's a German made one. If you don't know what Elmo is in the context of a projector, you darn well better look it up because I've made quite a few thousand dollars off of Elmo projectors in the past. I know the case from sitting across the room and that's the plus because you know, as long as I can see the handle, that's probably what's in here. The biggest plus on these, at least for me finding them, is if they don't turn on, the bulb doesn't come out in the projector, I can usually get them for five or 10 bucks. And I'm not exaggerating. If I ask how much you want for it, it doesn't work, five bucks. That's a common price on these right here. This is one of the biggest returns you can get on a, there's some other ones, but this is probably the one, a Bolo Flex or something might be different, but um, this one here, if I had the cardboard box, it might be worth more than that, but this one's worth about $4.50 once I put one of these bulbs in it and, it and it works. If I just listed this on eBay, I'd probably get 50 bucks for it, 60 bucks if I'm lucky, the way you see it right here. Now, there's um, direct drive. In fact, let's, let's take this out real quick here just to show you. Let me take it down. This thing weighs a lot. So you gotta be ready for it. This thing probably weighs about 30, 35 pounds, I would gather. What's neat about this one here, it can record sound on magnetic strip film. So you can actually record sound with this projector. It's got built-in speakers, it's got cords, it's got a microphone that comes with it in the box. I've had others of this exact same version. I've had others of different versions of it that didn't record, but this one's probably one of the best ones. Some of these projectors are direct drive, meaning there's no belts. If it doesn't spin and it's a direct drive, there could be an issue with it. It could be a fuse, something simple. I don't mess with a ton, but I do replace belts. If, if it's something like this and say the direct drive doesn't work, it, this one works. So the only thing this one doesn't have is a working bulb. I now have it. So I can add another $300 plus to my value in return on this $5 investment. And that's typical. The projectors I run into, no matter the brand, it's usually five bucks, especially when they don't work. Replacing the belts in these, even for a, a semi-novice, you can just watch a video on YouTube and it'll step-by-step -step show you how to replace most of those. The direct drive, you would just take the case apart and look to see if there's any internal fuses because most of these sort have internal fuses. You replace that fuse and boom, you are on the go. So these are usually easy fixes. Those are the two most common, or well, I should say three. The belt breaks, the direct drive may be jammed up, and sometimes it may just need oil and greasing. Spin it a few times by hand, spray it with some good oil or grease, and off you can go sometimes. And then the bulb, that's it. That's usually the biggest, most common factors in these. And fuse can take place or can uh, fix some of the issues. So anyway, the, the point being is, this item's missed because of the case, because of it, sometimes it's the only item there related to film. They may have, may have kept the film because it's family oriented. They, you know, stuff like that happens all the time. So sometimes you'll just see a lone projector, no home movies, no nothing. Even some of the, the lamps and bulbs for slide projectors can do okay, but nowadays most people just scan those totally. They don't mess with slide projectors. So I never mess with them. I don't save the carousels. They're not worth selling used. They're worth a dollar or two if you're lucky. So, you know, I trash them, as I said, recycle the cardboard from the boxes, keep the slides, save the bulbs to hopefully fix any of these projectors. I sell the extras if I got two or three of the same bulb. I easily sell all the extras, but I usually keep one bulb of each type because I'll make, uh, you know, a reasonable amount more than just selling the bulb by adding value to a projector. And Elmo is a name to look up. Look it up. I, I'm begging you right now, if you really want to know something valuable that's out in the real world, it's this. This is one of the most expensive ones out there. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
Franklin, you've discovered electricity. No, something really shocking. Look, carefree sugarless gum here, Trident here. Both cost the same, yet Carefree gives you 32% more gum by weight than Trident. And Carefree's taste electrifying. Then the electricity. Well, I'll think about it in Washington, A.C. That's Washington, D.C. Get more gum with Carefree. Now in bubble gum, too. More gum. Carefree sugarless gum.